Hello and welcome to St. Peter and Zion and the Churches. Today we celebrate the last Sunday of the church year. The Old Testament reading for this, the last Sunday of the church year, is from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock, when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered, on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries. And I will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel, shall there be grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be their shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I'll seek the lost, and I'll bring back the strayed, and I'll bind up the injured, and I'll strengthen the weak. The fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I'll judge between sheep and sheep. And I'll set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. My servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted, who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him, who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come. You who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. And then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? 
And when did we see you a stranger and welcome, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them. Truly I say to you, as you did to one of these least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and he gave me no food. I was thirsty, and he gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and he did not welcome me. Naked, and he did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and he did not visit me. Then they will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked, or sick or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return, with our eyes fixed on the kingdom, prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come. We pray this so often that we don't even think about how weird it is to pray in this particular way. We are asking for the reign of God the Father to come to us. We don't really give it a lot of thought. How often do you give thanks to God that you can pray for his reign to come among us as a comforting thing and not as a cause of terror? Consider Adam and Eve's response when God came to them. We hear, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. The man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. Adam and Eve were terrified of God because they had sinned. They feared his judgment. After all, the psalmist reminds us, You are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The coming of God's kingdom was the last thing they wanted. When we examine ourselves in light of the Ten Commandments, we learn that we sin daily and deserve punishment here on this earth and forever in hell. It seems as though we should be terrified to pray the words, Thy kingdom come. Why did Jesus teach us to pray in such a way that the coming of the kingdom of God means to come? judgment. God's actions in the Bible teaches us that there is another way that he can come, a way that brings comfort and confidence, a way that removes fear and despair. God came to Jacob in a dream. He came down a ladder and promised, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I'll bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. He appeared to Moses in the burning bush and said, But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Later on, Moses comforted the people of Israel with these words. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. God spoke words of comfort to his people through the prophet Ezekiel. 
My dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So it seems that the coming of the kingdom of God can come two completely different reactions. The first reaction is one of terror. I'm a wretched sinner and deserve God's righteous, eternal wrath. The second reaction is one of comfort, reassurance, and confidence. God is with me. Now I am saved. We see these two reactions in today's gospel. The gospel for these past few Sundays have been working their way through Jesus' teaching concerning the last day. There was the parable of the five wise and five foolish virgins. Then there was the parable of the talents. Today we heard about the sheep and the goats. In each case, there are those who reject that the reign of God has come, and there are those who despair at its coming. So what is the difference? Our Lord Jesus Christ has an ability that we do not have. He can look into the human heart. It is as he spoke through his prophet Jeremiah. I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind, to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Today's gospel, Jesus teaches that it is as easy for him to judge the heart as it is for a shepherd to tell the difference between a sheep and a goat. In fact, today's gospel teaches us that Jesus knows you better than you know yourself. Jesus will hand out two verdicts on the last day. In today's gospel, Jesus said that he would place some people to his right and others to his left. Since Jesus already knows the heart, there is no question, no testimony, no presenting of evidence. There's only the verdict and the sentence. The first verdict is for those on his right. The king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Those on the right enter the judge's home with a verdict of forgiven. Notice a few things about the judge's statement. First of all, know that the blessing flows from the father. It is not something that these people work out for themselves. Second of all, know that this is an inheritance. You don't work for an inheritance. You receive an inheritance because someone put you in the will. You cannot earn an inheritance. Finally, know that God prepared this outcome before any of us were even born. The kingdom is prepared from the foundation of the world. This tells us that this eternal kingdom was God's will for these people from the very beginning. The second verdict is for those on his left. Then he'll say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Those on the left receive the verdict of guilt. The sentence is eternal fire. In this instance, the source of the curse remains unnamed. The cursed condition is simply a characteristic of these people. Second, notice that this condemnation was not prepared for people. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. People end up in eternal fire only because they reject God's salvation. They are arrogant enough to judge God and find him offensive. Then the eternal fire is the only alternative. There is no other place to spend eternity. As the judge welcomes those on his right into eternal bliss, he recalls the work that his salvation has produced in their lives. Now here is the important point of the story. The sheep don't Remember any of it. The list of the works is a total surprise to the sheep. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? 
And when did we see you a stranger and welcome, or naked and clothed? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? They haven't got a clue. On the other hand, those on the left are angry that Jesus gives a similar list of things that they have not done. They have kept a careful record of their good works. And they know for a fact that Jesus did not present himself for their help at any time. Even as they stand before the judge of all things, they maintain that they have lived a life of good works and high moral character. The point is that those who inherit the eternal kingdom do not look to their own good works for their salvation. Instead, the Holy Spirit finds dead souls and brings them to life through the proclamation of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins. The Holy Spirit keeps those souls alive through that same proclamation of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins. The proclamation of our crucified and risen Lord and Savior leads to Christian, carries to Christian, and follows the Christian. The Holy Spirit causes us to relax in Christ. Good works are the result of the salvation that we already have. The Holy Spirit inspired the prophet Isaiah to write, We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. So even our best, most righteous deeds are still sinful before God. But Jesus Christ redeemed our deeds with his suffering and death on the cross. It is Christ on the cross who makes our deeds righteous. Those who have had their good deeds sanctified by Jesus, Focus on Jesus and not on their works. Jesus warned us and said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. They have received their reward. That is truly sad because they have traded away their eternal joy for the temporary praise of man. You are pleasing to God, not because of what you do or do not. You are pleasing to God because of what Jesus did for you. Jesus lived a life that met God's perfect standard. He died a death that paid our sin debt in full. He rose from the dead as a sign that our Father in heaven accepted his work for us. Your salvation has been paid in full. Recline in the Lord. As you recline in the Lord, you will be among those who can pray that kingdom come and look forward to that day. You can take comfort in the promise of Jesus. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. You can look forward in eager expectation to the day when you hear a voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. While you wait for that day, you will produce good works. These works do you absolutely no good, but they are precious to your neighbor. God will accomplish his will in this world through your works. Confess your sins, even those righteous deeds that are actually polluted garments. Receive the forgiveness of Jesus. Live for your neighbor. Don't waste time trying to measure your good works. You don't need them. You are an heir to the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Rejoice that God wants to dwell with you. 
In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. In the peace of God, which pass all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the people of God's pastor, gathered from all nations, that they may gladly feast upon his riches and the means of grace, declare his praises to all who will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For God's pastors, that through their service in his word, our good shepherd would be pleased continually to seek the lost, bring back the strayed, bind up the injured, and strengthen the weak. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our homes, that the Holy Spirit would bless parents to train their children with wisdom and love, that as a son gladly subjects himself to the Father, so God would bless his children to gladly submit to their parents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in temple authority, that God would sustain them in their governance until on the last day this world's powers pass away. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable and favorable weather, we ask your heavenly Father to open the windows of heaven and send bow the rain on us to revive and to renew the land. Without your care and preservation, all things with him die. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need of help and healing, that God would preserve them, deliver them from their transgressions, and hold not his peace at their tears. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the saints who have fallen asleep in Jesus, let us give thanks to the Lord, that God would strengthen our conviction that death is defeated as we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Mighty God, you have prepared your kingdom for us from the foundation of the world. Preserve us in faith and love throughout our days, that we may care for your servants and our neighbors with compassion and joy looking toward that day when the Son of Man comes in his glory, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.